Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to show you how you can implement the circuit breaker policy using poly in .NET Core. The circuit breaker is one of the most popular and more important policies that you can use to make your microservice or your service in general resilient and I highly recommend you know what it is because you will need to use it. In this video I'm not going to explain in depth what it is, I already have a video for that and you can click on the top right corner of your screen right now to watch that first if you're not familiar with it and then come back to this but I will be showing you how you can implement it and how Poly tackles this specific policy. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into the code. This video is part of my .NET Core series, so if you don't want to miss any episodes, please subscribe and ring the notification bell to get notified when I upload a new video. So first I want to show you what we have here. So I have two projects which are supposed to represent two microservices. I have a pricing API and a product API. The pricing API returns prices for a product and the product API returns the details like the name, the size, the, all that information. Um, and let's take a look at the controllers. So what we, we have here is a simple controller which injects the iPricing service. Uh, it accepts a product ID and a currency code and it returns the pricing details which if we go to the model is just the product ID, a price in decimal and the currency code and that's it. And we're faking the data because I don't have a database packing this up. But imagine that this is actually using some database to return this data. If I go in the service itself, I want to show you what I have here. I've made it so oh, one out of four times this service will fail and it will be unreachable for 30 seconds. This is meant to um, showcase a flaky service, a flaky API, something that might go wrong. It might not be the case always, but for example, if something fails and you know that it's going to fail for at least this amount of time, I want to represent that. It will also make my testing easier with this specific policy. This might not be the use case you want to be coding around. It's not this very specific thing. This is, this is just supposed to show that something can be down and can be down for a period of time without you uh, knowing for how long. So in this scenario, I just put 30 seconds to keep it short for the video. Uh, and the product controller injects the uh, product service and the pricing service. This is a different pricing service, by the way. This pricing service is calling the uh, other API, the pricing API. So remember, these are two projects. And what's happening in the controller is that first we're getting the product details. If the product is null, then we return not found. If it's not null, then we get the pricing and we return the product response. So I'm going to go ahead and just run these two uh, APIs real quick so you can see how they work. So we're going to Postman. Now this is a pricing API. If I click it, you can see that I'm getting the price for a product. And this is the product API. And as you can see, I'm getting both the name and the price. Now, you might have noticed it when I went to the pricing service, but what I currently have here is something very common we have a transient error retry policy. This is effectively a poly policy that I wrote myself. This project is already using poly, which will uh, get the response message and check if the status code is 429 or if it is more than 500, which in this scenario I classify as transient error policy. Now I know that this term actually includes more codes, but this is just for uh, demonstration purposes. And what I'm doing is I'm retrying for two times and I'm waiting for uh, two in the power of the retry attempt plus a randomized um, millisecond count. Actually, this should be 1000. And the reason why I'm doing that, uh, this is called a jitter. It's effectively randomizing the exponential back off uh, time of your retrying. Because if everything was timed to the T, then you could be effectively DDoSing your service uh, by having many requests retrying at the same time. So this is adding some randomization into the mix. Um, and it's also backing off to see if, you know, I'm going to retry in half a second. If it doesn't respond, I'm going to retry in one and a half seconds. If it doesn't respond, I'm going to retry in like five seconds and so on and so forth. And then... I'm using this policy to execute my GET request to that API and if the response code is not successful, I'm returning service is currently unavailable because without the pricing API, I can't return the product. 
in a realistic scenario, you would probably have some cache backing up this pricing, uh, potentially in memory or using Redis. In this scenario, imagine we do not have such a thing. And if the pricing API doesn't respond, we cannot show the product. Now, some of you might be thinking, hey, why do you do this, Nick? Um, Poly actually has an extension package that can be hooked up within the HTTP client factory and provide that transient functionality. You can just go here and say, handle transient errors or whatever. You do have to add, however, the uh, poly.extensions.http package. The reason why I'm not doing that is because you might not always have a use case to use the HTTP client to have some retrying. You might have a database call. You might have uh, so many things. So for that purpose, I'm handwriting the, uh, the retry policy. And I'm also making it not on an exception, but on a, a result. Now, what I want to do in this is add a circuit breaker because as you can see, if I uh, restart these services because I made this uh, small change, I'm going to show you exactly what the problem is. So let's run this and go back to Postman. Now, if I go back to Poly, you can see this is returning fine, but now it failed because of the randomized thing and it failed two times and I'm going to get a service is unavailable after seven seconds and after two retries. Now, if I do this again, because the service is unavailable, it will retry a couple of times again, make me wait for seven seconds and go downstream. And this will keep happening. So I can keep spamming it and all these requests now wait for each other. And effectively, you know, eventually it's, it's back up again. But if I click it again, it might be down again. As you can see, it is. So the problem is that we're piling on requests upon requests that are retrying and they're just trying to get the service to respond even though it won't. And you don't know it won't, but you might know that if it is down, it might be down for at least one to two minutes or like five minutes. I had scenarios where I had to use circuit breaker for 15 minutes even, and I had to use a fallback as well in this scenario. So. What we want to do is we want this to fail fast if we know that the service won't respond within that time span. And this will prevent requests for piling on and being queued, stressing out downstream dependencies for no reason. So we can implement that very, very easily. As I, as I said, you should already have Poly in your project. It's this um, package here called Poly. Amazing project. And all you need to do to implement this, this is actually very simple, is you need to create a private uh, static read-only uh, async circuit breaker policy. And I'm going to use the same HTTP response message. I'm going to call this a circuit breaker policy. And I'm going to say, I'm actually going to just copy, ah, I don't need to copy that, uh, policy.handle result. And then here, let's copy that. We have the message and then the message um, dot status code is 503. Uh, 503 indicates uh, that the service is unavailable downstream. So if that's the case, effectively pop open, open the circuit breaker and don't allow any other requests in. So now we have that. And then we need to say circuit breaker async. And now the first thing we need to provide is how many errors, how many handle events of this scenario, uh, the bad events, do you want to handle before you break open? So in my case, I'll say that if you have two errors, then open the circuit and break the circuit. And then we need to specify the duration of the break. So I'm going to say from minutes uh, one. What this will do now is it will wait to see two errors, two things matching this predicate. And then if that's the case, open the circuit for one minute. And what I need to do now is I need to copy that. Let me just stop this from running. And I need to wrap this uh, transient error retry policy with the circuit breaker. I'm going to do something and I'm going to make it better uh, afterwards just to to stick on the context of the circuit breaker here. So I'm going to say circuit breaker dot execute async 
and then I'm gonna take all that keeping the retry by the way in there and I'm gonna say second breaker on top of transient error retry policy and then do the request and because I want this to fail fast before it even creates a new client so before it even gets there what I can say is if circuit breaker policy circuit state equals to open so when it's open requests cannot get through then throw an exception service is currently unavailable and in this fail fast scenario we won't even go and make any retries any requests any anything so request comes in is the circuit state um, closed or half open if it is then try to use the circuit breaker and the transient retry policy and if everything is good happy days if not is the um, status code 503 okay is it the second request you handle okay open the circuit for one minute and don't allow any requests for a minute let's see this in practice so i'm gonna run the project and i'm gonna go back here and i'm going to send this request so it works fine but if i run a few others effect yeah eventually it will fail so it's one out of four uh, it's retrying a couple of times as you can see in the console down here and if i retry again this will be the second attempt where the api will error out which means that now as you can see i'm getting instant service is currently unavailable and i'm gonna keep getting that for a minute and this is happening because as you can see here on the breakpoint the circuit state is now open and it will be for the time specified now i'm gonna keep the breakpoint here i'm gonna wait for one minute and show you what happens when we hit that time span mark so one minute has passed so let's hit send and see what's happening in the circuit so as you can see the circuit state now is something called half open half open essentially means that some requests will be let through and if they're successful the, then the circuit will go closed again if not it will pop open again for again one minute or whatever you specified in this scenario it was successful so if i click send again as you can see now the circuit is closed and we're handling requests again properly as you can see it works fine so this is a very simple way to implement that and you can actually see huge improvements on not wasting any resources and not effectively ddosing your own service when you don't need to now circuit breaker i think is only one of the two circuit breaker approaches the other one that poly supports is called uh, advanced circuit breaker so i'm gonna go ahead and comment that out and show you what advanced circuit breaker is now advanced circuit breaker takes the concept one step further you can set a threshold of requests that are failing so it doesn't have to be one or two or three or four subsequent requests uh, one after the other it can be a threshold within a sampling period effectively a time span so let's see what we can do with these parameters so i'm going to change that to uh, 0.5 and this means that if 50 percent of the requests fail uh, within time span dot from minutes within one minute so if 50 percent of the requests fail within one minute and the minimum amount of throughput is 100 so if 50 requests fail out of 100 within one minute then break for uh one minute sorry for this being elongated i didn't want it to be uh like that let me just change it right so again let's go through that again failure threshold 50 percent if 50 percent of the requests fail sampling period a time span where you want to check if the requests fail so if 50 percent of the requests fail within one minute minimum throughput the minimum amount of requests within that period of time the one minute that you need to have in order to make a judgment and then duration of the break same thing as before how long you want to break for one minute or five minutes or whatever and that's the basic idea of the advanced circuit breaker you can have cases where you need a simple circuit breaker and you can have cases where you need an advanced circuit breaker this is specific to your use case for example in this scenario it might be good, a good idea to use a simple circuit breaker 
but you might have a more complicated one where you need the advanced version. The opening and the closing works the same, so you don't need to worry about that. And they are interchangeable. So you can see I didn't have to change this to an async advanced circuit breaker policy. It's just a different way to configure it. The last thing that I want to do is I want to create a policy wrap. And what this really does is it will wrap a few policies together so I don't have to chain them in this very ugly and readable way. So what I need to do is I need to go here and I need to say private read-only async policy wrap of HTTP uh, response message and then I'm going to name this resilient policy and then that is equal to the uh, circuit breaker policy because that happens first wrap async the transient error policy and now I have my policy wrap which is a wrap of two policies this over this remember the outer needs to go out the inner needs to be wrapped same way that this is the outer and this is the inner and now all I need to do is remove that and change it to resilient policy and then delete that and now I have a more readable um, contained resilient policy. That's all I had for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you liked this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.